Good evening and welcome to our conversation regarding children commencing their kindergarten journey in a well-rounded, high-quality educational environment. My name is Alicia Dyer and I'm Head of Primary here at Newcastle Grammar School. My primary education experience commenced almost 30 years ago. Over the years, I've worked in a number of independent school environments, including boys' education, girls' education and in co-educational schools. My experience has contributed towards my belief that a quality education should be personalised with passionate educators who believe in futuristic education. Tonight, I am joined by Mrs Amy Faulkner, who is Head of Primary Teaching and Learning at Newcastle Grammar School. Her teaching career spans 20 years across education sectors in Australia and in the United Kingdom. Amy has been involved in school leadership for over 14 years, and she joined our primary leadership team this year. She is passionate about working collaboratively with staff to develop differentiated learning programs which cater for our students' varying abilities, learning styles, interests and needs. We are also joined by Mrs Melinda Tucker, who is Head of Primary Learning Support and Literacy and Numeracy Intervention in the early years. Her teaching career spans 20 years in the private education system and she has a passion for early literacy and numeracy development. And Mr Daniel Wern, Deputy Head of Primary, who with over 10 years experience and having recently completed a graduate certificate in wellbeing and positive mental health, Daniel has an extensive background in creating and implementing student wellbeing policies and procedures across primary. Should you wish to contribute your thoughts and questions this evening, you can do so by clicking on the Q&A icon at the bottom of your screen. At the conclusion of our webinar, we will email you a copy of our presentation along with answers to your questions. This evening, you will receive invaluable information and insight into the kindergarten journey. This will be delivered in four components. One, what makes a high quality kindergarten experience? What should I be looking for when choosing a school for my child? Two, the effective teaching and learning framework. Three, effective teaching of literacy and numeracy in kindergarten. And four, visible wellbeing and positive education. Commencing school can be an emotional time for families, especially if it is your first experience. With a personalised learning program for your child, along with passionate educators, the kindergarten adventure can be a very successful journey. The purpose of education is to prepare young people for the future. Therefore, it is our responsibility, one we take very seriously, to assist our young people to develop the capacities they will need to thrive. A student commencing kindergarten next year will graduate in 2034. We need to ask ourselves, what will their world look like? Learners entering the world after 13 years at school will need to be critical thinkers, communicators, be able to easily collaborate, be creative, curious and independent researchers. Parents need to place emphasis today on choosing a school that will provide their child with an effective learning framework that is both explicit learning and inquiry driven. Experiencing the balance begins the preparation for an unknown world. Teachers have a big impact on student mindset and the feedback that teachers give their students can either encourage a child to choose a challenge and increase achievement or look for an easy way out. For example, studies on different kinds of praise have shown that telling children they are smart encourages a fixed mindset whereas praising hard work and effort cultivates a growth mindset. When students have a growth mindset, they take on challenges and learn from them, therefore increasing their abilities and achievement. Our students from kindergarten are educated about Carol Dweck's studies around fixed and growth mindsets. They know when students believe they can get smarter, they understand that effort makes them stronger, therefore, they put in extra time and effort, and that leads to higher achievement. Australian research has found that children, families and teachers each focus on different issues about starting school. Children are concerned about the rules of school and friendships. Parents want the teacher to appreciate the specialness of the child. 
Parents are concerned about their child adjusting socially and separating easily. Teachers give priority to children experiencing a well-balanced education, along with being able to operate in a large group and demonstrating independence as required. International research tells us that there are two key factors that underpin learning success in the first years and beyond, social and emotional regulation and academic development. When choosing a school, parents need to look at the personalised learning environment and the opportunities within the school. At our school, we provide students with learning opportunities taught by educators who specialise in the following areas, music, art, Mandarin, STEM, physical education and sport. There are also exciting opportunities within our extensive co-curricular program. Students have access to occupational therapy, our school psychologist, English as a second language teacher, enrichment teaching and learning support teachers. Along with these passionate teachers, students also receive explicit teaching in positive education, which begins in kindergarten with teaching children how to make and keep friends. Each day, our lunchtime clubs provide our students with engagement and purpose and assist them to make a friend through sharing a common interest. Our students enjoy activities such as Lego Masters, STEM challenges, chess or sport clubs. By providing our students with a choice, it gives them some ownership and purpose to their play. Every child is supported socially and emotionally by our passionate teachers and our nurturing wellbeing team. Now, I would like to hand over our discussion this evening to Mrs. Amy Faulkner, Head of Primary Teaching and Learning. Thank you, Amy. Thanks, Alicia. Hello and welcome. By the end of this session, I hope that you will have great insight and a tremendous comforting sense of the educational journey that your child will embark on in their first formal year of schooling. Firstly, I would like to acknowledge that all students bring to school a range of knowledge, understanding and skills that have been developed in the home and prior to school settings. The movement into kindergarten, known as early stage one in New South Wales, should be seen as a continuum of this learning. We consider it a wonderful privilege to be able to commence this journey in partnership with you and your child. In New South Wales, the curriculum is structured in primary and secondary years. Students move through six stages of learning, commencing with early stage one. The following five stages each incorporate two years of schooling. Throughout these years, it is hoped that students will foster a love of learning and a sense of curiosity and wonder of their world. The New South Wales Education Standards Authority, NESA, is responsible for developing kindergarten to year 12 syllabuses for New South Wales schools. The mandatory key learning areas for primary school are English, mathematics, science and technology, history, geography, personal development, health and physical education, and the creative arts, incorporating music, visual art, dance and drama. Aligned with current research, at Newcastle Grammar School, we offer a balance of explicit teaching and inquiry learning to approach teaching and learning from kindergarten to year six. Explicit instruction is a way to teach concepts or skills to students using direct, structured instruction. Sometimes referred to as I do, we do, you do, this model proposes a plan of instruction that includes demonstration, prompt and practice. The benefits of explicit teaching have been shown to make higher order thinking and inquiry based learning easier, reduce the load on working memory, assist students with difficulty maintaining attention, help to overcome language barriers by using consistent and clear language, accommodate learners of all abilities, and it allows for specific data collection and analysis. In our K-2 years, we offer several explicit instruction programs to support and extend our students. These include synthetic phonics underpinned by multi-sensory learning, talk for writing, get reading right, the multi-lit suite, spelling mastery, Professor Pete's mastery of mathematical number facts and Pirate Maths Equation Quest. Inquiry learning at Newcastle Grammar School follows the well-renowned Kath Murdoch inquiry cycle. By creating learning environments that cultivate curiosity, we aim to grow young people as confident, 
capable and creative inquirers. Our teaching nurtures a sense of wonder and helps our students to grow as thinkers, collaborators, self-managers, communicators and researchers as they inquire. The extensive benefits of inquiry learning include social interaction by encouraging students to generate their own ideas and critique others during group discussions. Exploration as students investigate, design, imagine and explore, therefore developing curiosity, resilience and optimism. Argumentation and reasoning in a safe and supportive environment for students to engage in discussion and debate. This encourages students to generate questions, formulate positions and make decisions. And finally, positive attitudes to failure, as failure is an important part of the problem solving process. A healthy attitude to failure encourages reflection, resilience and continual improvement. For many of you, this way of learning may not be what school was like for you. However, research tells us that harnessing natural curiosity and using it is a driving force for learning. By tapping into a child's curiosity, they will feel more motivated and find a sense of purpose in their learning. Perhaps you may wish to foster a great sense of curiosity and wonder in your interactions with your child. This could be in the form of a home inquiry. Have your children been asking lots of questions about a particular topic? Are they always wondering about how things work? What are their passions? Use this information as the driver for their desire to learn. An example of this in action is the fairy scientist which can be found on YouTube. You may even be interested to visit the Wonderopolis website to further explore wonderings from around the world. Taking in all of this information, you may well be wondering how teachers tackle the range of diverse needs within their grade to teach all students effectively. At Newcastle Grammar School, we pride ourselves on planning for, delivering and monitoring personalised learning programs to suit the needs of all learners. This is known in the educational field as differentiation. Differentiation is used by teachers to design lessons that provide the right amount of support and challenge for every student. Differentiated teaching takes place when a teacher plans a lesson and adjusts either the content being discussed, the process used to learn, or the product expected from students to ensure that learners at different starting points can receive the instruction they need to grow and succeed. Differentiation is a targeted process that involves planning, programming and instruction. It incorporates the use of teaching and learning and assessment strategies. These need to be fair and flexible, provide an appropriate level of challenge and engage students in learning and meaningful ways. At Newcastle Grammar School, we are committed to all of our students by providing them with a quality differentiated education. We look forward to engaging with you as parents and carers to share in your child's learning journey and to celebrate their individual achievements and personal growth. Thank you, Amy. Parents will often ask me what should quality teaching of literacy and numeracy look like. I now invite Mrs. Melinda Tucker to provide us with some insight into a quality kindergarten learning environment. Good evening, and I would like to extend a warm welcome also. When Alicia asked me to present tonight, I'll admit, it's probably a little sad how excited I was. But then I went to write it, and I realised what a large task it was, because I want to provide you with the right amount of information and not overload you. So after much consideration, I've decided to break the presentation into two sections. I'll begin with effective teaching of early literacy, and then I'll move on to effective teaching of early maths. So you might be asking yourself, don't all schools teach reading and spelling the same way? The answer is very surprising, no. At Newcastle Grammar School, we teach reading by following the overwhelming research. Over the past 20 years, there have been three very famous independent inquiries about how to best teach reading. The three reports overwhelmingly said the same thing, we need to teach literacy through the five big ideas. The five big ideas are phonological awareness, phonics, fluency, vocabulary, and comprehension. The first step is phonological awareness, 
And this is the one that is most overlooked by many schools. However, it is vital to teach, to, is vital to spelling and reading success. Phonological awareness is able to manipulate sounds. The easiest way to understand this is knowing that you can do all of these skills with the lights off. You don't need to have any knowledge of letters to complete these skills. It includes being able to detect rhyme, being able to produce rhyme, hear the beginning sounds, being able to b, u, e, n, d sounds together to make up a w, r, d. It is also breaking words up into syllables. This is the crawling before the walking. Students must have these phonological awareness skills before they can become successful with their reading and spelling. If these foundational skills are not taught thoroughly enough, cracks will almost certainly appear later in their literacy journey. What I mean by this is that a child can have all the sound knowledge in the world, but if they never learn how to break words up into syllables in kindergarten, they may find spelling difficult when they are attempting longer words in years three and four. Number two is phonics, and this is when we introduce the letters. For this skill, of course, the lights must be on. It is the relationship between the letter and the sound. The complexity of the English language makes teaching phonics well critical. We teach phonics at Newcastle Grammar School in a synthetic phonics approach. And I assure you that this doesn't mean fake. What it actually means is that we get students to start synthesizing sounds very early on so that they can read. It also means that we teach phonics in a systematic way and we do not randomly select sounds being introduced. We do this because the research from the three famous studies have proven that this is the most effective way for all students to have reading success. Fluency. This is when the magic of reading really begins to happen. This occurs when we have phonics and phonological awareness to a point where you don't have to think about using them. Students are no longer having to use cognitive energy of decoding and they just start reading the words on the page. At Newcastle Grammar School, we develop reading fluency by having an individual sound probe program where students read a set of words within a time frame, as well as completing re repeated readings of passages. Fluency is critical to reading comprehension. Vocabulary. A rich vocabulary is absolutely vital to reading success. We didn't realise just how important a wonderfully rich vocabulary was until these three separate reports highlighted it. What builds vocabulary are the words that we hear being used around us and reading. If you look at a word like obnoxious, a beginning right reader might get ob, they might get obni, but if they've never heard of this word, they'll have nothing to relate it to. However, if they have this word in their vocabulary, they will often make that leap and make that connection between an unknown word, even if they have not learned all the sounds. We need to teach vocabulary direct, directly and explicitly. We need to instill an absolute love and passion for words. This needs to be demonstrated in the classroom, but also at a whole school level, and ideally it would be supported at home. We get results from what we draw our attention to, and we need to draw attention to vocabulary by paying direct attention to it and helping children appreciate how wonderful and fun words can be. Comprehension. This is the utopia of reading. Comprehension does depend on the other steps being in place. This is when students are able to read fluently and they are able to make connections and understand what they have read. Even though your children cannot read at the moment, you can still support reading comprehension right now. You can stop midway through your nightly book and ask for predictions. You can pull out the vocabulary. What does swiftly mean? Ask them how a character might be feeling. Now, many schools say that they teach phonics in a synthetic way, and some do, but what sets apart a good school from a great school is the addition of one critical element. The critical element is constantly tracking all students' progress. By doing this, it allows us to really understand each individual learner, which will then inform us if we need to reteach concepts that they may have missed, or equally importantly, it informs us if we need to move through the sequence at a faster rate if a student is assessed with advanced reading skills. For effective reading and spelling instruction to occur, 
The school needs to track effectively and this requires having a team of people doing it. This is an area of strength for Newcastle Grammar School. Our school have a team of people dedicated to tracking every child's progress of not only their phonics knowledge, but also their phonological awareness, their reading fluency and their comprehension. At any point in the term, you could come up to me and ask how your child is going with reading and I'd be very confident telling you exactly where they're at. In term one, you'll also get regular communication from the school about your child's progress. The phonics book will be sent home daily and in this, you'll receive information about what skills your child is demonstrating in class, but also what skills they might be having difficulty with. Later on in the year, I get the opportunity to present again and speak to you about how to best get your child ready for reading and writing. And whilst I would love to tell you this now, I have been reminded many times not to go over my allocated time slot. So without further ado, I'll move on to the mathematics component. Whilst the extensive research regarding best practice in literacy teaching exists, the research about best practice in numeracy teaching has trailed behind. However, the last 10 years has seen increased research about evidence-based practice for numeracy teaching. We have recognised the need for a greater emphasis on maths, and we are working in partnership with the Association of Independent Schools, as well as Professor Peter Price from the University of Queensland to develop an evidence-based numeracy program. We are pioneering this under-researched KLA and ensuring that all of our students have a deep conceptual knowledge of numeracy concepts. We know the research indicates that best practice in numeracy teaching replicates effective strategies in literacy. This means we need to explicitly teach and track math knowledge. And again, you need a team of people dedicated to ensure this is implemented. At Newcastle Grammar School, we teach foundational mathematical concepts using evidence-based programs that have five components. These are screening all students, teaching using explicit instruction based on our findings from the screening. We teach students underlying word problem structures. This is targeted through the Pirate Mass Equation Quest. We introduce basic fact rehearsal to improve, to improve mass fluency. This is completed using Professor Pete resources and we track all students to ensure the concepts are mastered. The most important element when teaching early numeracy skills is using a variety of strategies and representations, or what some people know as the CPA approach. The C stands for concrete, the P stands for pictorial, and the A stands for abstract. Let me explain how this approach works and why it's vital when teaching early numeracy. In order for young children to learn any abstract concept, which the majority of maths is, you must begin with the concrete representation, then move on to the pictorial representation before finishing up with the abstract representation. An essential component for any effective program is to practice and review the learnt material. This is what most schools are not providing and therefore students end up being retaught over and over again and you cannot move on to more complex material as they've not mastered it. Our kindergarten teachers are the masters of this CPA approach and they are implementing this method within their maths lessons, but also they incidentally sprinkle it throughout the day. An example might be walking into a room and asking how many students there are today. A good kindergarten teacher would automatically see this as a maths opportunity. A superior kindergarten teacher would say, hmm, I'm not sure, let's count. Then she would go and count each student in the class. This is the concrete representation. Our experienced kinder teachers may say, oh, that's one less than usual. We usually have 19. This impromptu lesson wouldn't stop there though, because the teacher would then show the students that what this looks like on a tens frame. And they would be pointing out a variety of other smaller facts like, oh, I can see that is an even number today because we have all the dots have pairs. This is what we call the pictorial representation. Finally, our kindergarten teacher would provide the abstract representation by writing on the board 19 take away 1 equals 18. Now, many of our students might not be ready for this abstract representation. However, there will almost certainly be a few that are beginning to make this connection to the mathematical symbols. 
One vital element to a superior maths program is being able to ignite curiosity and passion for maths, and this is the responsibility of all adults. Just like children seeing their parents reading and being read to, it is equally important for children to see adults talking about maths in everyday life and see you being positive about your own maths ability. You can also get your child interested in numbers by starting to discuss your mathematical observations. As a parent, you are probably already doing a lot of this concrete representation without even knowing it. Examples of this are when you're grocery shopping, asking your child to count out the number of apples and then asking them to return one and then recounting them. Asking your child to share or divide the Pokemon cards with a sibling. If you're at the shops and then they're asking to purchase something that you're maybe not that keen for, you could say, oh, I can't buy that because it's eight dollars. If you find something for five dollars or less, I might consider it. When you eventually say no to the item, you've also explicitly taught them the word consider. Now, you can never underestimate the importance of playing cards and board games with your child. You know, Go Fish, Snakes and Ladders, Connect Four are all wonderful examples. These provide opportunities for correspondence counting, number identification, and sabotaging of dice patterns. This means knowing how many dots there are without counting. Teachers who love to teach have students who love to learn. And that's what we have here at Newcastle Grammar School and why I also love working here. I look forward to being part of this exciting journey with you and meeting you face to face. Thank you, Mel. The research tells us that unless our children are feeling confident, safe and happy at school, then we won't see the progress. They simply won't flourish. Mr Daniel Wern, Deputy Head of Primary, will now address us regarding the importance of visible wellbeing and positive education. Thank you, Alicia. Good evening. As Deputy, my role entails several things, but at the core of it is student wellbeing and ensuring that all our students not only enjoy coming to school, but also growing their understanding themselves and those around them. This begins with the fact that at Newcastle Grammar School, we have deliberately chosen to be a visible wellbeing school and our approach places wellbeing firmly at the heart of everything we do and brings together best practice teaching and learning with learning the skills and mindsets to flourish. Visible wellbeing is a whole school evidence-based approach to developing and sustaining student, staff and community wellbeing. Under the guidance of Professor Lee Waters from the University of Melbourne, the visible wellbeing approach offers a language, lens and framework for flourishing. As a visible wellbeing partner school, we appreciate the importance of tuning into wellbeing and making something that is invisible, seen, heard and felt. In addition to promoting the positive psychology principles of growth mindset, gratitude and resilience. At Newcastle Grammar School, our visible wellbeing program includes proactive elements such as developing skills that build resilience, promoting a school culture that emphasises respect, teamwork and participation. Our wellbeing program includes the following pillars. Creating a sense of belonging through team building activities, facilitating peer support programs, specifying positive education lessons, developing skills and knowledge in order to prevent or address specific problems such as bullying, tracking individual student progress and enabling early intervention in identifying and dealing with specific needs through individualised growth plans, celebrating student achievements and contributions through weekly assemblies and gatherings, providing counselling through our school psychologists for, stu for students dealing with anxiety, loss or those requiring further guidance, and finally, whole staff training days. There are a range of reasons behind why it is vital that schools have a well-researched and deeply embedded wellbeing program. Students who feel connected, safe and secure are more likely to be active participants in their learning and to achieve better physical, emotional, social and educational outcomes. The well-being of children and young people is enhanced and their learning outcomes optimised when they feel connected to others and experience safe and trusting relationships. At Newcastle Grammar School we run a kindergarten and year four buddy program. Compared to the more traditional kindergarten and year six buddy programs, due to the smallest size campus and close to age gap, this program allows a smooth transition for children starting school and promotes social and support networks for children beginning kindergarten, whilst developing a sense of community and belonging to the school. 
We greatly value parent support and interaction. Parents and families play an important role in supporting their child's education. Research has shown that when schools and families work together, children do better, stay in school longer, and are more engaged with their schoolwork. Some of the ways we promote parent involvement include early morning parent reading, math mental support, along with parent and networking events. My personal philosophy is that every child needs a champion. This phrasing is taken from Rita Pearson, who surmises that every child needs a champion, an adult who will never give up on them, who understands the power of connection and insists that they become the best that they can possibly be. We are educators. We were born to make a difference. The two key concepts to draw out of Rita's talk are teaching and learning should bring joy and no significant learning can occur without significant connection. And I'm extremely proud to say that these values are at the core of wellbeing and positive education at Newcastle Grammar School. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you all for joining us this evening. We trust you that we have provided you with some clarity around what we believe a quality kindergarten experience should look, sound and feel like. We will provide answers to your questions this week via email. Should you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to email us to keep the conversation going. Best wishes to those families who have children commencing school in 2021. Good evening.